In this lesson, we work on error in measurement. Now, the absolute error, all right, we have a plus and minus there, equals the smallest unit of measure multiplied by 0 0.5. Right, now, that's an important result. Let's see how it works. Let's look at some examples. We need to find the absolute error for each measurement. Hence, find the upper and lower limits of each measurement. Well, let's consider firstly 43 meters. Now, 43 meters is accurate to one meter. So the absolute error, plus and minus, is going to be the smallest unit of measure multiplied by the 0 0.5. So the one meter times that by 0 0.5, and simply that equals plus or minus 0 0.5 meters. Now, the absolute error, that's been done. That's what the absolute error is. We now need to find the upper and lower limits. So let's consider the 43 meters there, and it has an upper and lower limit. The length is 43 meters, plus or minus this absolute error, plus or minus the 0 0.5 meters. Now let's do the plus firstly. The 43 plus the 0 0.5 will give us an upper limit of 43.5 meters. If we now do the minus part, 43 minus 0 0.5 gives us a lower limit of 42.5 meters. So from our little diagram, we're saying that 43 meters, if it's accurate to one meter, lies between 42 and a half meters and 43 and a half meters. Now, part B, 60 centimeters if this measurement is accurate to the nearest 10 centimeters. In other words, it's been rounded off to the nearest 10 centimeters. Well, let's write down our 60. Because it's accurate to 10 centimeters, the absolute error will be the 10 centimeters times the 0 0.5, okay? The smallest unit of measure multiplied by 0 0.5. And that works out to be plus or minus 5 centimeters. So that's our absolute error. Let's look for upper and lower limits. If we consider a little diagram there, there's a 60. Upper and lower limits marked. The length starts off as being 60, but we're going to add 5 centimeters and subtract 5 centimeters. So adding the 5 centimeters firstly, we get that the upper limit is 65 cm. And subtracting the 5 centimeters, we get that the lower limit is 55 cm. So we're saying then they are our upper and lower limits. So a length of 60 centimeters, if it's accurate to the nearest 10 centimeters, it lies somewhere between 55 centimeters and 65 centimeters. Part C, 5.2 kilograms. Well, 5.2 kilograms is accurate to one decimal place. In other words, accurate to 0 0.1 kilograms. So let's work out the absolute error. We're going to multiply that smallest unit of measure, the 0 0.1, by a half, by 0 0.5. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.5 works out to be plus or minus 0 0.05 kilograms. Now, upper and lower limits. So 5.2 is our measure. So the mass is 5.2 kilograms. We're going to add and subtract our absolute measure, the 0 0.05 kilograms. So let's do the addition firstly. When we add the 0 0.05 on, we get that the upper limit is 5.25 kilograms. When we subtract the 0 0.05, we get that the lower limit is 5.15 kilograms. So looking at our diagram there, if we have a measure of 5.2, it must lie between 5.15 and 5.25. Excellent. Now, what about relative error? Well, relative error equals the absolute error over the measured quantity. Percentage error is the same. It equals the absolute error over the measured quantity. The difference is that we times by 100 to change it to a percentage. Now, that's important information there. Try to remember that. Let's see how this works with a few examples. An egg has its mass measured as 64 grams. We need to find the absolute error of this measurement. So 64 grams firstly, that is accurate to one gram. So the absolute error is the one gram, the one times by a half. 
we get 0 0.5 grams, okay? We're going to add and subtract that. So, part B, find the relative error of this measurement. Now, the relative error is the absolute error over the measured quantity. So, the absolute error there, 0 0.5 grams, okay, plus and minus, over the measured quantity, which is 64 grams. So, we write that as a fraction. And that works out to be a small decimal number there, fairly small decimal number. Don't forget the plus and minus. Now find the percentage error of this measurement. Okay, that's percentage error simply what we had before, the relative error, but we're going to multiply by 100% to change it to a percentage. So when we do that calculation, we get 0.78125%. Again, write the plus and minus in front. Terrific. Now some further examples. A large sheet of plastic measures 2.4 metres by 1.8 metres. Find the largest possible area that the plastic has. And we're going to answer correct to the nearest square centimetre. So there's our sheet of plastic, 2.4 metres, which is accurate to 0.1 of a metre. The absolute error then, plus or minus, would be the 0.1 times 0.5, which is plus or minus 0.05 metres. Now the length then we can say is 2.4 metres plus or minus 0.05 metres and that works out to be that the length must lie somewhere between 2.35 metres when we do the subtraction and when we do the addition 2.45 metres. So the width 1.8 metres, let's concentrate on that now. Well 1.8 metres again is accurate to one decimal place, so 0.1 metres. Absolute error equals 0 0.1 times 0 0.5 works out to be again plus or minus the 0 0.05 meters. So the width then is 1.8 meters plus or minus the absolute error. So when we do the addition and subtraction we find that the width lies between 1.75 meters and 1.85 meters. Now we need to find the largest possible area. So, if the length and the width lie between those limits, we'll choose the highest of the limits, okay? If we're after the largest area, let's choose the longest lengths. So, 2.45 metres long and 1.85 metres wide. So, we need to answer, though, our area correct to the nearest square centimetre. So, let's change them to centimetres. So, therefore, the area, the largest possible area, equals, okay, the product of those, 245 centimetres by 185 centimetres, and that works out to be 45,325 square centimetres. Terrific.